What's up guys, this is Eddie, welcome to the new video. DC Universe Online is one of the most successful superhero MMORPG game and today we are gonna decide if we should play DC Universe Online in 2018 or not. Let's take a look at few factors. DCO was launched in 2011. Back in those days, superhero movies had just started to appear on big screen like Thor in 2011, so people were getting interested in superhero games, and Sony Entertainment made it possible. Being the only superhero MMO, it gained a lot of attention. Although other games had achieved a lot better in terms of graphics like Crisis in 2007, DC Universe Online being an online game had to make sure that it was not that much graphics heavy, so the player can have smooth gameplay experience. It is somewhere between cartoonish and realistic, also heavily inspired by comics the graphics made sense back in the day. But now it's 2018, you would think with new technologies available to developers they might have improved the graphics, but that is not the case here. DCO is still running on the same engine and delivering same graphics as it was in 2011. I give it 4 by 10. One of the best thing that I like about DC Universe Online is its combat system. This game has totally different combat system, uh, you know, compared to any other MMO out there. So basically, your character has superpowers and command and weapons. You have wide range of weapons to choose from. The superpowers works as most of other MMOs out there. You cast a power. Each power is different casting time and then cooldown time. Typical stuff. But as far as weapons are concerned, weapon uses this combo system. You have to use your mouse or control in certain way to get different types of combos. Game also offers blocking and block breaking which is one of the main factor in PvP as well as in PvE. You learn about these mechanics within the first 5 minutes after character creation. It takes some time to get used to this combat system but it is easy to learn and there are a lot of videos on YouTube including my channel to learn the basics. I give it 9 by 10. Every superhero has superpower. Well, Except Batman. In DC Universe Online, you have choice to choose from around 16 power sets when you create a character. Although it depends on your account type, if you are a free user, you will have access to only a few power sets. Power sets includes ice, fire, water, earth, so basically you can play as an avatar. Uh, then it has the famous lantern powers, which includes green or yellow lantern, and rage power set, which is basically red lantern. It has gadgets inspired by Batman, nature inspired by Beast Boy and Poison Ivy, and many others. Overall, it's fun to play with different powers if you are role playing. And I give it 9 by 10. Now this is something where you might disagree with me. I have been playing this game since 2011 and trust me on what I'm about to tell you. So in the beginning you will actually love every single moment you spend in this game. After a month you will almost reach maximum level, known as combat rating in the game. And you will realize that hey, isn't this the same map I played when I was level 10? And uh, then the next alert or raid you will say that hey, isn't that the same maps? You know, I played in level 20, so you know what I'm getting at? This game has a lot of rehashed map and locations. In order to progress, DCO forces you to play same maps again and again and again. You might see a few changes like different boss or different decoration item, but overall it will be the same map. For example, you will, you know, you visit Temeskira so many times that you will start to hate it. Then you will visit Metropolis so many times in different episodes that you will quit the game and take a two month break before you could visit Metropolis again. So trust me, it's sucks. I give it like 4 by 10. I started this game as a PvPer and all I did from 2011 to 2013 was PvP. PvP in this game used to be really good because of the combat system you had to pay attention. Real time blocking and block breaking was the key to be a good PvPer. Using right power at the right time and when in groups using healer, tank or controller roles were the best thing in PvP. But year after year it just went downhill. Nowadays you cannot even get a queue for PvP instance because it is so broken that nobody wants to play it. So powers are broken in PvP, they're not balanced, weapon system hardly works and even if you manage to get in a PvP arena you will be so frustrated that you will never PvP again in the game. The developers have been lazy and they don't even respond to the complaints which players make on forums or Twitter about PvP. It has been more than two years that players have been waiting for a revamp for PvP system in this game and it is just sad. There are a few, you know, a small amount of players who are PvPing in the open world but that's not how it used to be back in the day. So I give it 0 out of 10. 
DCO went free to play in 2011 after a few months of launch. Now back then there was not much content to play. There were a few powers and like 2 to 3 episodes. So there was like one power which you could buy with real money. But now it is totally different. After playing for a few days you will realize you cannot progress without spending real money. There are so many hidden things behind paywall. Now they are like... 30 episodes currently episode is just another word for dlc by the way so you can buy either buy each episode separately with real money or you can buy all access legendary membership for 15 dollars a month and there's not much that you get from you know getting legendary you will have unlimited cash option get few replay badges and 500 daybreak currency every month to buy items from marketplace and what is replay badge you ask? Well, we will discuss it later. But before that, there is more. There are feats which you need to make your character stronger. Now, for most of the feats, you have to complete certain instances and do certain jobs to get the feat done. But then they introduce time capsules. Time capsules are basically DC Universe Online's money grab scheme. You will have a chance to get one cosmetic item or a collection item which will give you a cos cosmetic item as a reward after you know completing 12 of those collections. So what are the chances? Like 0.00001%. All these cosmetic items have feats attached to it. So in order to get strong fast, just buy keys to open these time capsules with uh, you know real cash and after spending hundreds of dollars pretty sure you still won't get anything what you need and uh, that's how they are making money and if you don't want to pay money or you don't want to buy keys you can open one uh, time capsule every third day if you run a certain event every single day so considering the chance ratio you might never get the cosmetic items which you need for feats and by the time you will open like 30 time capsule without paying real cash they will launch another you know money grabbing time capsule so now you have to get the new one and the old one so yeah in short if you have a lot of money to waste sure go ahead play this game from start to end but if you want to save money Play it for free, don't worry about fears or anything, enjoy for a month or two and then just delete it. And my score for free to play and pay to win feature is 3 by 10. This is another money grab scheme from Daybreak. Basically, when you finish an instance, for example a duo or an alert or a raid, you get loot locked. You will have to wait for one day to be able to play it again and uh, as far as raid is concerned you have to wait a week. To be able to play it again and get marks or loot again well you can play it again but you won't get loot again so if you want to keep up with everybody else in the game just buy replay badges with real money and you can unlock your instances which are loot locked with those replay badges so see how simple it is to progress in the game just give them money and you can win so my score for this feature is 1 by 10 this game was developed by Sony Entertainment. They had a good team. Then Sony Entertainment became Daybreak. There was a huge, you know, change in developers and staff. Ever since then, the game has never been the same. They do launch new content every two to five months, but it's same old rehash content with a lot of glitches. And although the content is published on test server before launching on live server, they don't care what testers have to say usually. They launch it anyways on the live server and then, you know, live server players play the bugged content for a few weeks, sometimes months, until they finally get a hotfix. Power sets are never balanced. For example, ice and electricity will never do same damage. Harlot and rage will never do same damage. Every month there will be a hotfix making some other power set better than, you know, all other powers. Also known as flavor of the month forcing players to switch to that power set by spending real money. There are many glitches in this game and players have continuously reported them but they did not fix them. So when players exploited these you know, glitches, Daybreak recently permanently banned 400 plus players in a single day because it's in their terms and conditions. So basically instead of fixing the glitch, blame the players and yeah, GG. My score for this, 1 by 10. Since the game is on multi-platform, it is really hard to calculate current population correctly. PlayStation and PC share the same servers, but Xbox has entirely separate server. Back in 2014, DC's population was at its highest peak. Since we can only look at stats from Steam, we can take a wild guess about the overall population. On Steam, at the moment, average population for January 2018 is 448 players per day. So if we add up PlayStation, you know, 
just basically double the steam uh, population and that's around 900 players per day so back in 2014 to 2016 DC used to have around 3,000 players per day and uh, just from the st from steam and now it's down to 448 so the overall population has dropped majorly on top of that they have banned over 400 active players from both PC and PS and with all those glitches and bugs I don't think this population is gonna go up any higher uh, than now and it is so hard to find players to run any instance right now new players are joining daily but old players are leaving at the same speed so my score 3 by 10 this is the last point we're gonna discuss so I left the best for the last character customization is one of the best in DC Universe Online from level 1 you will start getting gear which is basically your armor but each gear is also a style so by the time you will reach maximum CR you will have 20 pages of you know just chest styles or leg style you can almost roleplay every single character you can think of you can dress as every superhero from no matter Marvel or DC any cartoon character any game character your imagination is basically the limit so this is the best thing in this game I give it 10 by 10 now that you have all the scores it's time for final verdict it is simple if you love superheroes or you love to role play you should definitely play this game but do not spend a single penny of your real money it is not worth it enjoy the game and its feature as free to play play it for a month or two or maybe more and just delete it uh, one more thing this game has one of the most saltiest community you will ever see if you see a red pencil and you say it's red they're gonna say it's blue but if you say it's blue they're gonna say are you stupid it's red so good luck with that just enjoy the game and my overall score for this game is 4 by 10 and this is it guys help me reach 10,000 subscribers by pressing the subscribe button if this video helped you in any ways give it a thumbs up and leave a comment i would really appreciate it see you guys later